Hello everybody, Colin with the SoundTestRoom.com here. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the Apollo series of apps. Uh, these are very, very cool. So there is Apollo MIDI over Bluetooth, Apollo Remote Recorder, and Apollo Sound Injector. And uh, we're going to start by taking a look at Apollo MIDI over Bluetooth. I'm using an iPhone 6 here and a, uh, an iPad 4, and I'm shooting this video with an iPad 2. Uh, usually I use my 4 to shoot the videos, um, you know, just, just working with what I have here, which you know isn't much in terms of uh, video, video cameras. But um, the reason why I can't do that is because the iPad 2 actually does not have MIDI, uh, I'm sorry, Bluetooth LE, which is a, uh, you know, the, the latest and greatest Bluetooth, I guess. And unfortunately it's not available on the iPad 1 or 2, and it's not available on any iPhone before the 4S, I believe. Um, so this is only on newer devices, you know, the last couple generations here. So make sure that you can actually use the app if you are on an older device. You know, double check before making any purchases. But, um, but yeah, so we're going to take a look at Apollo MIDI over Bluetooth first here. And then I'm going to shut the video off and uh, we'll go with better video quality for, for the other Apollo apps here. But let's check out Apollo MIDI first here. So I'm actually going to, I'll just shut it down real quick and open it up on both devices and it's as simple as just you know picking an endpoint for each so a on the phone b on the ipad and have them search for each other and uh you know bada bing bada boom we are connected it, it could not be any easier we can see all of our our midi connections that we have uh you know the the green means active obviously and the red is is inactive so Animog isn't even running on this device anymore, but uh, because of a previous connection, it still stays connected. So very handy. In fact, um, you know, even though these apps aren't running, it still has kind of an internal memory. So, so very cool stuff there. So now that we are connected, our devices are good to go. Let's open up Thumb Jam on the iPhone and MIDI Sequencer on the iPad. And what's so cool about Apollo MIDI over Bluetooth is that we can now use you know, iPad-only apps to connect ourselves to uh, to our other devices, and this way we can use you know MIDI sequencer, which is you know iPad only, to uh, to control Thumb Jam here on my on my phone. So very cool stuff there. So let's make sure that we're active with Apollo inside of uh, MIDI sequencer, and in our preferences for Thumb Jam, we can go to MIDI control, and see that Apollo um, is our note put note input and clock input. You know both highlighted there, both looking good. So now that we're now that we're connected, let's just hit play, and we can hear that we are sending to uh, to Thumb Jam here. I know it's sideways. Well, uh, we can see that um, you know the BPM is is moving. It's trying to be found there. It's sending clock. So very cool stuff. So we we have our active connections now. Let's just draw in a little curve there, real quick. So now let's uh, let's hook up Thumb Jam here on the iPad. So now that we can hear that we are sequencing both, you know, the the both Thumb Jams, I, I guess you could say, um, you know, one on the iPhone, one on the iPad there. So there is a slight bit of latency with this. Uh, one thing you could do is instead of using MIDI sequencer, you could program a you know MIDI data inside of a DAW or something, and uh, you know like the piano roll editor, and um, and you could send it out over that way, and then you could actually move that you know slightly off within your your tracks alignment in order to compensate for any MIDI. So. I don't know, you know, hopefully that makes sense, you know, like say we've got Cubasis opened up and we want to, um, you know, draw in our MIDI data by literally manually moving that MIDI data, you know, three tenths of a second to the left, you know, we can sort of compensate for, um, you know, any kind of lag when, when sending the, the data there. But yeah, so that's a quick look at, at Apollo MIDI over Bluetooth. It's so simple to get, get going. It's really just a few taps, uh, very cool stuff. So I'm actually going to shut off the video now and we will take a look at the Apollo Remote Recorder and Sound Injector 
with uh, both iPads going here. So I'll be right back. See you soon. All right, back again here for round two. So let's take a look at Apollo Remote Recorder and Apollo Sound Injector. So Remote Recorder is is very simple in its uh, in its execution. Ha has a sound injector and uh, you know much like MIDI over Bluetooth here. So what we can do with this app is we can record right into this um, using this in the output of audio bus. So if we want to get a nice chain going and, and you know just record right into the app we can. We can also copy into it, uh, paste our recordings out using um, you know the audio copy app there. We can export and import using audio share which is very simple. So we could just import um, you know with a, a few taps here. So bada bing bada boom there it is. Swiping uh, left is enables delete for us. Once we have a recording that we like, we can export it with a single tap right into to audio share here. You can see it there. And we can also email it and uh, and use open in um, you know with the, any of the apps that support it, which is a growing list, you know, all the time. So we also have a little web server area over here. So this is really cool. So what we can do with this is once we have our recordings that we've captured, we can go to Safari here and um, you know type in the web web server address that you see. And just like that, you know, we can see our recordings. So while we can't do anything with this on an iDevice, if we were to open up this address on our desktop, we would be able to download these files, you know, right um, you know, right from our desktop or right from the Safari or Chrome or whatever we're using. And that way you don't have to hook up your iPad, you know, with any cables or anything like that. You can do this all wirelessly with just a few, a few clicks and, uh, and capture your recordings and send them right over to your desktop. So really, really, really handy stuff there. Uh, I know he's also working on VSTs um, so that this can just kind of integrate right with, you know, Logic or Ableton or things like that. Um, I really haven't experimented a whole lot with that. So um, you know, I can't speak to it. I know it's kind of a work in progress still too, but um, you know, as it is right now, this is very simple in order to, you know, like I said, we could just download this, you know, right, right to the PC there and be able to work with those files that way. So what's really cool too is we can, um, let's just close this down real quick. Close down Safari. And now let's open up AudioBus on both devices here. And let's get uh, Apollo Remote Recorder in the output over here and Sound Injector in the input over here. And it's uh, going to the system output, that's fine. So now with Apollo Sound Injector, we just need to type in our, our same address from the web server here. And now we can stream our our audio bus chains right into uh, you know right to sound injector here and send it over to the other device. So we hit connect. We can see that we're connected there. So it looks good. Unfortunately, we can't just play the files. So when I hit play here, nothing's nothing's happening, and I was a little confused about that at first. But what this does is it it acts as a um, you know a stream. So it can only send what's coming in. It can't uh, can't send its own own files that you've made. So in Audio Share here, we'll open that up, and let's just go back to uh, you know the song that we were just using here. And I have my volume all the way down on this, so you can you can tell when I hit play here. This will be this is this iPad's recording. So now our, our song from Audio Share here is run through Apollo Remote Recorder and sent over to Apollo Sound Injector over here on the right side. And um, you know, again, very cool stuff here. So this way we can, you know, kind of create audio bus chains, you know, that use, you know, things that are available on this iPad and send it to another one. So if we have a buddy, you know, who might not have some of the same apps that we do, if you just want to kind of experiment with workflows and see, you know, um, start getting MIDI MIDI over Bluetooth involved and sequence one device, send that recording over to another one and finally send that finished product to your PC. You know, you can do all sorts of stuff with this. And so really, you know, with this very simple execution, it kind of opens up a whole new world 
of, a, of workflow for you so that you can kind of find out what works for you and be able to send your audio files you know, for, across all of your different devices. So really cool stuff. I'm a, I'm a big fan of these, uh, you know, just playing around with them this week. Um, you know, yeah, so if you have any questions or anything, hit us up at thesoundtestroom.com. Um, you know, I know Secret Base Design is doing a wonderful job with these apps, you know, working on the VST series for them so that they can just integrate right inside of Logic or, or things like that. Um, but yeah, you know, like I said, yep, hit us up if you have any questions. Uh, soundtestroom.com. Check us out on Patreon if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I will catch you guys again very soon. All right, take care.